In example two, we're going to combine what we did with example one along with actually solving the equation. So looking at A, we have 4 and 64 as the bases. We need to change those into the same base. It may not always be obvious what the base is going to be, but it should always be a smaller number because we're going to be putting an exponent on it. So the good news is with this one is 64 can be expressed as 4 cubed. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to touch the 4 to the x plus 2, but 64 will become 4 cubed. That had an exponent of x on it. We're going to keep that there. We'll take that and simplify it. 3 times x would be 3x. And it's at this point when we have the same base on both sides of the equation, we can actually cancel the bases, and we can say that the exponents are equal to each other, so that x plus 2 equals 3x. This now becomes a very basic type of an equation. We need to isolate x, get it by itself. I'm going to take the x from the left, subtract it to move it to the right. So we have 2 equals 2x. And we'll divide by 2 and get that x equals 1. B is not quite so easy because 8 can't be expressed as 4 with an exponent on it. So we'll need to pick a different base. We can take both 4 and 8 and express them as a power of 2, so that's what we'll start with. 4 becomes 2 squared, which had the exponent of 2x on it. 8 becomes 2 cubed, which had an exponent of 2x minus 3 on it. Simplify those exponents down. On the left, 2 times 2x is 4x. On the right, the 3 has to distribute in, so we'll have 2 to the 6x minus 9. We now have the bases the same, so we can cancel them. Say that 4x equals 6x minus 9. Isolate x, I'll move the 6x to the left, subtract it. We have negative 2x equals negative 9. Divide by negative 2. We'll leave it as a fraction. x equals 9 over 2.